Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is reportedly on suicide watch while being held at the Metropolitan Detention Center right here in New York City. Though his lawyer has reassured the public it is standard procedure for high-profile clients. Diddy is scheduled back in court for a hearing next week after he was denied bail for a second time. This following charges against him of sex trafficking and other abuses spanning three decades. Here with us now is trial attorney and legal analyst Misty Maris. Good morning, Misty. And Caitlin Becker is back. Caitlin, I want to start with you. What are we expecting in next week's hearing? You know, honey, you never know what you can expect in a situation like this. Yeah. Because of how high profile he is, his team could come out with any sorts, any number of motions. I mean, they're really trying to get him out of jail while he, where he's going to wait until this goes to trial. But next week is just a status conference. So we're going to be seeing a lot of these really procedural bits and pieces through the court system in the coming months. I mean, from the point of indictment and arrest to actual trial can be really, really long. Sure. I know his team is trying to speed this up as quickly as they can, but I know there's so much hype around this right now, but it does kind of slow down after those initial appearances. Misty, Mark Garagos, who previously represented Diddy, his daughter is one of his attorneys now, joined Vargas to talk about his experience at one of Diddy's white parties. We know about those parties. They were infamous. Here are his thoughts on the case, Misty. I'll talk to you on the other side. Having attended one of those notorious, or the way the package, or you described the white party. The white party? I, yes, I, I, I've been to one white party. You're I outing admit, yourself I, as a, a guest at the I white party? Said, I thought that they had made a pretty persuasive argument for bail. But I mean, Mark, he, he, was, he was calling one witness 128 times in four days. Um, well, it, that, it, I mean, it, it, isn't that it, it, that shows a, a, a sort of manic, you know, inability to to not tamper with a witness? So, Misty, what do you make of the decision to deny Diddy bail not once but twice? Also, not change his location to another jail. We know the Metropolitan Detention Center is known to be dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. The Metropolitan Detention Center is notorious, and there's a lot of criticism about uh, civil rights issues and about the fact that it, there's not a lot of uh, not enough security, and there has been violence. So the defense has actually asked that he be transferred to Essex County. That's in New Jersey. And the other alternative would be Otisville. That's in upstate New York. The judge actually doesn't make that determination. That goes before the Department of Corrections. So there is the prospect that he could be transferred to one of those two other facilities in the coming weeks or months before his trial. As for bail, there's an important legal aspect with respect to the type of charges that we're seeing here. And that's that the defense actually comes in with the disadvantage when we have charges of this level and severity. And that's because the judge has to look at it from the presumption of detention, meaning it's more likely that somebody will be detained when they face these charges than not. And then the judge was very moved on that aspect of obstructionist behavior and also that he was willing to engage in violence, which the Cassie video was actually used to further that point on behalf of the prosecution. So I'm not surprised that he was denied bail. His lawyers did everything they can, presented a package, keeping track of every single individual he, he would come into contact with. But the nature of the charges would make that very, very difficult, especially with someone so high profile like Diddy. And Caitlin, Diddy's lawyer says, look, he's doing fine. Suicidal watch is procedural. But why is it necessary? You know, as Misty mentioned, it's a really nasty place to be incarcerated. So that off the, just out of the gates is something you want to keep an eye on. Of course, we've had one of the most high profile suicides in incarceration at that very same detention center was Jeffrey Epstein. So that's something they're looking at as well. And as they said, it is procedural, but you have to think about it. You have someone like Diddy who's, uh, who's the way he lives is most certainly not going to be the case when he's behind bars. So with such a drastic change in how he's living the high life versus now he's living life behind bars. You just want to keep an eye out. I mean, it's going to do going to do a number on someone's mental health, no matter who they are, whether or not they're guilty or innocent. And of course, in this case, he has pleaded not guilty. But when you're behind bars there, it's a scary place to be. And so if you're looking for a way out, they're just making sure that that is not going to happen. And Misty, with the case prosecutors are building against him, in your opinion, what would Diddy's best strategy be? 
Look, he's going to have to attack the nature of the charges. To Caitlin's point, we're going to see a lot of pretrial motions. They're going to be saying, okay, these federal sex trafficking charges, these are not appropriate under the circumstances. They may have to concede other conduct that are bad acts or even criminal, but that they don't fall under this very, very serious set of federal uh, federal statutes. And with respect to the racketeering charges, I would expect to see the defense to argue as this case proceeds that you had a lot of independent bad actors, not necessarily individuals who are working in furtherance of the quote unquote Combs enterprise. So those are the two areas that defense attorneys are going to attack. And by the way, Caitlin brought up a great point about timeline of trial. So a defendant has the right to a speedy trial. That means 70 days from indictment to trial. But the question is, can the defense actually prepare the way they need to prepare? 50 witnesses interviewed, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of audio, video, recordings, electronic devices received. So a lot of defendants do waive that. That's something to keep in mind as we come into this week's uh, procedural hearing. Will he waive speedy trial or will we be on that rocket docket uh, for a trial in the coming months? But you're, we can expect to see these pretrial motions and a lot of arguments relating to the individuals involved, which has also been foreshadowed yeah. by the defense attorney interviews. Okay. And so that's where the defense is really going to attack the legal theories of the case. He's facing such serious criminal charges. Caitlin, do they have anything to do with the 10 civil lawsuits that he's up against as well? You know, Hannah, these are not one in the same, but so many of the allegations in the civil lawsuits are braided into this indictment. The Cassie Ventura issue is, I think, the first one that comes to mind. It was very clear laid out in the indictment. She sued him and alleged that he attacked her at one point in a hotel, had beaten her, chased her down. They settled that lawsuit. Then, of course, we saw the video of it happening. And that exact incident was specifically almost word for word to her lawsuit laid out in the indictment. There is mention, they didn't mention her by names, but it's very clear that that is exactly what they were talking about. Mm. Now they use the term victims in the plural in the indictment, but don't specifically lay out instances of different women. But I think what we can see and what we will see is as we learn more about the charges against him, we will see some of the names that have popped up in these lawsuits likely being brought in in this indictment and in these charges perhaps as witnesses or perhaps as these victims. Missy, right now Diddy is the only person facing charges despite accusations of illegal activity by associates of Diddy Combs. Could we see other, others charged? Could they testify against him? Yes, Hannah. So the whole, the word enterprise says it all. That means that there were other individuals involved, other co-conspirators, and prosecutors have laid that out in the indictment that individuals who were closest to him were committing all sorts of crimes in furtherance of the Combs enterprise. And to your point, we certainly could see other indictments coming down the pike of those who were involved or and or, let's just put it that way, it could be both, uh, you're going to see cooperating witnesses. And those witnesses will be people who were involved, who have an intimate knowledge of the operations of the enterprise and of this sex trafficking, the, the facts behind the sex trafficking allegations. And so that's, again, where you're going to see the defense attack because you're likely to see individuals who have entered into non-prosecution agreements. That means agreements with prosecutors that they will not face charges in exchange for their cooperation and testimony at trial. And because there's always an incentive to go along with prosecutors in that sense, that's where the defense is going to impeach some of these witnesses. So it's all interlinked, but it does appear that prosecutors have already spoken to a number of what are called cooperating witnesses mm -hmm. who do have that intimate knowledge and are generally going to be a part of that enterprise. So we could see more to come. And if there are people that are holding out yeah. and have not cooperated yet, you could see charges levied against them, ultimately for the goal of going for the kingpin, the big fish, and that's Diddy. Ladies, thank you so much for breaking down this case. We'll be watching it closely. I know you will too. Misty Maris, Caitlin Becker, thank you.